Hello everybody, welcome back to another video on the channel of Mr. Footballer Loons and today I'm doing Game Week 16 predictions of the Pre- Elite So hot versus Liverpool game that- Hello everybody, welcome back to another video on the channel of Mr. Football Loons and today I'm doing Game Week 16 predictions of the Premier League and they're going to be starting off on the 9th of December. It is Crystal Palace at Selhurst Park facing Liverpool and well, Crystal Palace in the last game lost it against AFC Bournemouth, two goals to nil. It was quite a close game overall, you know, I felt like it could have easily been a draw. I did expect more from Crystal Palace. But overall, they didn't play that bad. And, well, Eze is still missing going into this. They've still got the likes of Elisa and Edouard up front, which I think can definitely do some damage to Liverpool's defence, considering I believe Joe Matip is not, you know, available for Liverpool. And Joe Gomez in the last game could have cost Liverpool a goal because he, I don't know what he was doing. Just didn't think, didn't release the ball in time, and he lost the ball, and it could have easily been a Sheffield United goal there. And I feel like Liverpool have also without Alisson Becker, considering what Kelleher did against Fulham, he did concede three goals, and he did get makes. It wasn't fantastic. A bit better performance against Sheffield United, but overall, I feel like Liverpool's defence is a bit leaky. I feel like Crystal Palace will get two goals in this game, but Liverpool have the quality. They've got the attacking edge, in my opinion. And I believe this game will be a high-scoring 3-2 result towards Liverpool, as there has been a lot of high-scoring games. Moving on to the next game, it is Wolverhampton Wanderers at the Molyneux Stadium, facing Nottingham Forest. And well, Nottingham Forest lost it 5-0 against Fulham. I was not expecting a 5-0 thrashing. I was expecting a much closer result. And as you know, Nottingham Forest's away record is terrible, but in recent time, their home record hasn't been fantastic. And overall, in terms of results, Nottingham Forest are not doing well whatsoever. And, you know, coming into this game away against Wolverhampton Wanderers at the Molyneux, Wolves tend to do quite well at their home stadium. You know, with home advantage and everything, Wolves are still missing Pedro Neto because of a hamstring issue he picked up a few games ago. But overall, Hang Hee Chan, another goal. He just keeps on scoring goals no matter what. Cunha assist. Those two are an absolute masterclass. If they had Neto, I'll be a bit more confident in saying Wolves will win this. I am going to edge the home side purely because Nottingham Forest is not in fantastic form. Their way record poor, pretty poor. So I am going to go Wolverhampton Wanderers just by one goal to nil. Moving on to the next game. It is at the Amex Stadium. It is Brighton Hands of Albion facing Burnley. And while Burnley in their last game, they lost at 1-0 against Wolverhampton Wanderers. It was a very tight affair overall. And well, Burnley, I felt like they have looked good in a few games, such as the 5-0 winning at Sheffield United. You know, I felt like they at least deserved a draw against West Ham. And not too long ago against Crystal Palace, I thought they did very well. I thought they deserved the win, but they lost that 2-0. Overall, Burnley aren't doing fantastic. And it's not helping with the injury of Kali Yosho. Lol Foster still out going against Brighton and of Albion here. And considering Brighton are much higher up in the table, much more experienced in the Premier League in recent time, you know, Brighton obviously the favourites of home advantage here. They managed to get a really good 2-1 win against a good Brentford side. They are suffering from a few injuries, actually quite a lot. But overall, Brighton, I am going to edge Brighton. Burnley haven't been fantastic. So I am going to give Brighton the win here. And I'm going to give them a 2-1 victory come the final whistle. Moving on to the next game. It is at Bramall Lane. It's Sheffield United versus Brentford. And obviously, Paul Hackenbottom has been sacked. And they brought in Chris Wider. And you know what? For his first game, a 2-0 loss at home against Liverpool isn't that bad considering Sheffield United have been battered 8-0 and 5-0 in recent time. I, th I, thought, I thought they played okay. I thought they were in the game overall. You know, they could have had a chance to... Make an opening, make it 1-0. They were very close to capitalising on Joe Gomez's mistake. But overall, Sheffield United, that's a bit more promising under Chris Wider. But against Brentford, obviously Brentford now have even more injury issues adding to the list. Brian and Buebu got injured in the last game. So that's adding to their list. It's not good for Brentford. And the fact that Sheffield United at home may be a draw, but I feel like Sheffield United still don't have the quality Change of the manager ain't going to be good enough, I feel like. I feel like I am going to edge Brentford. I don't feel like Chelsea United are going to win this. I wouldn't be too surprised for a 1-1 draw. But I am going to go for a 2-1 Brentford win come the final whistle. Moving on to the next game. It is at Old Trafford. It is Manchester United facing AFC Bournemouth. And you know what? It's going to be a close game. Bournemouth on fantastic form. Manchester United aren't performing fantastically, although last game I thought was much more promising. They started it well and they ended off with a win. McTominay seems to be scoring all their goals 
you know, I wasn't expecting him to get around, I think, was he got like six, seven goals this season? I was not expecting him to get that many goals. Hodgling yet to get a goal in the Premier League, but he did show some promising signs against Chelsea. And overall, Manchester United are a bit more energetic against Chelsea, considering their home here. I feel like it could be a close game. I could see a draw. But yeah, I'm just going to be able to... I'm, ju I'm just edging towards Manchester United. Even though Bournemouth have played fantastic. I feel like Manchester United will get this over the line in the latter stages. Like they normally do. The latter stages, they'll just about win this one goal to nil. Come the final whistle. Moving on to the next game. It is at Villa Park. It is Aston Villa against Arsenal. This has to be probably game of the week, surely. Aston Villa versus Arsenal. Now, this one is going to be a close game. But I have never seen any team better Manchester City like that this season or last season. From memory, I have not seen a team do that. They played fantastic. <coughs> Leon Bailey, man of the match. What a masterclass. His dribbling, his footwork, and to top it off with a great goal as well. A very good goal. Overall, Aston Villa did fantastic. And I believe they've gotten 14 home wins, if I'm not mistaken. And I feel like the home record is going to continue against Arsenal. Arsenal wasn't... Amazing against Luton Town. They only did it in the latter stages. Declan Rice just about getting it over the line, being the hero of the game against Luton Town. It, it wasn't, you know, amazing. Considering Aston Villa managed to dominate Manchester City, I feel like they're gonna win this. I feel like I feel like in my opinion, they're the favourites, Aston Villa. Home and they've played well against Manchester City and overall all season they played well there in this title race and I'm going for a 2-1 win to Aston Villa come the final whistle. Moving on to the next game, it is the 10th of December, it is at Kenworth Road, it is Luton Town versus Manchester City and well Luton Town showed fight, they showed fight against Arsenal scoring three goals against a very good defensive Arsenal is fantastic and can I say Luton Town's best player in that game, probably man of the match because I watched it on Prime Ross Barkley, absolutely superb. You know, he strangled the passes. He was the heart of the side. And to top it off with a goal is superb by Ross Barkley. He's back in the Premier League and he's proving himself to be a Premier League baller, a Premier League quality player. On the other hand, Manchester City got a loss. And they've had three losses in the Premier League season so far, Manchester City. And I have looked and there's a pattern. Rodri has not been in all three games they lost. He wasn't in against Wolverhampton Wanderers. He wasn't in against Arsenal. And he wasn't there against Aston Villa. I believe he's re he is returning for this game. So I feel like Man City will get this over the line against Luton Town. Although it will be hard because Luton Town show fight. And they are quite a hard team to break down. Because they, you know, they defend for their lives. They give it all their effort whatsoever. I don't think it's going to be a thrashing. But I feel like Man City have the quality to have a comfortable win eventually. I feel it'll be quite close. It might be like one night half time. And then near, near, near the later stages of the game, they'll top it off with a second goal. So I'm going 2-0 to Manchester City. Moving on to the next game. It is at Craven Cottage. It is Fulham versus West Ham United. And Fulham winning at 5-0 against Nottingham Forest. I thought they'll win it, but not by a five-goal margin. You know... Raul Jimenez, two goals in that game, three goals so far this season. Is he starting to click? You know, he hasn't scored a brace since 2020 till the Nottingham Forest game. It's fantastic by Fulham. He scored eight goals in the last two games. And they're facing West Ham United, which managed to also get a win against Tottenham Hotspur. That was a very good win in the London derby. 2-1 away from home as well. You know, West Ham United, James Ward-Prowse, set-piece specialist. Got himself a cheeky little goal. Fantastic. You know, I feel like West Ham United, in my opinion, have better quality than Fulham. But because Fulham are at home and they've got a bit of momentum in terms of goal scoring, I feel like they will score a couple of goals in this game. And I feel like West Ham United have enough quality. They're doing very well playing that counter-attacking football. I feel like overall this game is going to have goals in it. I'm going for a full four goal thriller. I'm going for a two all draw. Moving on to the next game, it is Everton at Goodison Park facing Chelsea and this one's hard to predict because just in any game that Chelsea play against any team, you know, it's hard to predict because they're so inconsistent. They lost it 2-1 against Manchester United. Wasn't their best performance ever. It was not their best performance whatsoever in the last game and they're facing Everton which won 3-0 against Newcastle United. I mean, to be honest, Everton absolutely dominated in terms of shots, in terms of creating chances. They, it was quite close, though, against Newcastle. It was 0-0 to right at the end where they scored three goals because Newcastle were fatigued. We'll, we'll get into that later on in the video. But overall, Everton, they're looking promising. You know, at home again facing Chelsea, especially inconsistent. 
in my opinion, this is an unpredictable game. It could be a win to Everton, could be a thrashing for Chelsea, could be a thrashing for Everton. Could be a high scoring draw, could be a low scoring draw. I really don't know. I am going to back up Chelsea as I feel like they're going to be wanting to bounce back after a loss against Manchester United. So I am going for a 2 1 win to Chelsea against Everton. Moving on to the next game is at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. It's Tottenham Hotspur versus Newcastle United. And when Tottenham Hotspur in the last game, like I said, lost at 2 1, they've got huge injury issues. Newcastle, huge injury issues. Plus, both teams have been playing loads of games in a row, loads and loads of games. Newcastle are struggling. I believe Jamal Lascelles, you know, he came off the pitch injured. I, I don't think it's a long one, so he should be able to play against Tottenham Hotspur. Should be able to start. But overall, Newcastle, they look fatigued. You know, for the entire game, they look fatigued from the from the set go. When, they, when the whistle first blew to start the game off, Newcastle United look fatigued. And overall, Newcastle... They, they were in the game, they were in the game, but they looked even more fatigued near the end of it, and then they lost themselves. Kieran Trippier, two mistakes. He was at fault for two goals. You know, he needs to get some glasses because I don't know what he was doing trying to... He, looked, just, he didn't see Jack Harrison whatsoever. But overall, you know, that's unlucky for Kieran Trippier. Overall, as a player, he's very good, but it could be because he's fatigued, you know, Newcastle playing back-to-back. -back. So I feel like he might recover coming into this game. But overall... I, I can't split the sides because both teams are in similar situations with a lot of injuries. Both both teams are going to be fatigued. I'm going to go down the middle. I'm going to break this game. A two-all draw. At the goal of game week 15, I'm picking Pascal Gruss's goal against Brentford. Just outside the box. Beautifully hit in the right side of the goal. Fantastic by Pascal Gruss. And well, how am I going to do in game week 15 predictions? Well, I got a total of three points out of 20 points. No exact uh, you know, predictions correct. I did get whether they'll win, draw, or lose correct three times, but overall, that's not enough. That's not good enough by me predicting. And out of 300 points, overall, I've picked up 94 points out of 300 points. Hopefully, you did enjoy the video. Hopefully, you can like and subscribe. And always remember to turn on those notifications to know it's one of my fantastic YouTube videos. I'll see you next time. Toodle pip now.